is very serious. We've now got whatever happens in the rest of the seats. We've got three in the north and one in the south. They've all said no. Newport, even I was surprised at, I must say, because even I thought that with the general election result there on May the 1st, uh, and with the fact that you do have uh, some very strong campaigning that took place in Newport, I thought it would be a lot closer. And, it, and indeed, I came in here today thinking that if Newport was, which I expected to be one of the first results, had announced that they were, that they were voting yes, then I could pack up my bags and walk out. But the fact is it hasn't been that way. And this is very serious, I think, for the government now, the way that this is going. Do you think that this result leads you to believe that it could be a no result over the whole of Wales? I'm not going to count my chickens yet, but all I'll say is, on what I do know, is that even with these results now, the fact that there are some very seriously low turnouts as well, that this is bad news for the government. Hello, Mary Jones. What do you conclude? That uh, other parts of Wales can rescue it for the Yes campaign? I think it's much too early to call. Uh, I think we, we all, the Yes side here, will have to honestly say we're disappointed with the Newport result. Uh, I'm not hugely surprised. I do think the Labour Party has to take some responsibility for not getting its vote out. And indeed, this was, you know, this was the concern of many Ply Cymru activists that we would actually end up getting out there and doing the work for a proposal that wasn't ours. Uh, if this result is reflected elsewhere in South East Wales and in the valleys, then I think the Labour Party will have to take a very serious look at its internal organisation and its discipline. But it's much, much too early to say. I mean, these have all been regional results right down the east. I think, though, that if, this, if we do then get a yes vote for the rest of Wales, we do have to look at this division and the Assembly will have a serious job to do to address that and, I, and that's a point at which I would agree, I'm sure, with Michael. So at the very least, uh, Lambert Obic, uh, another more evidence of a regional split uh, in mm. Wales. Yes, yeah, split, split's a very emotive word. We knew that uh, the east side would be harder to win than the west, but I think where I agree with Nigel is this could be serious. Labour has to deliver the valleys as we go further west. If Labour can't deliver the valleys, then we'll lose the vote. Now, as everyone has said, it's too early to say, but it's certainly becoming much more interesting to watch. And Chloe, they're all blaming the Labour Party for not <laughs> getting the vote out. I'm not blaming the <laughs> Labour Party, I'm just saying that it'll be interesting to see the degree to which the Labour Party has succeeded in bringing its vote out. It's just an observation. I think it's too early to descend well, into Mary Jones party was attacks. Bla was, was blaming <laughs> you, Anne Chloe. I think it's a bit uh, early to uh, apportion blame to people who've been partners with you mm -hmm. in attempting to get this vote out. And uh, who has or who hasn't I've got to stop you there, out. Hugh. Glyn, we're going to get the result from Merthyr Tydfil. Mark so Cullen Yadai ar gafer Merthyr Tydfil. Here are the results from Merthyr Tydfil. Nifer y plaid leisiau dilys a fwrw dros yr wyfyn cytuno a dylid cael cynulliad i yes, Gymru vote. oedd. The number of valid votes cast for I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was 12,707. Nifer y plaid leisiau dilys a fwrw dros nid wyfyn cytuno a dylid cael cynulliad i Gymru oedd. The number of valid votes cast for I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was now meal can't die their game 9,100 9,121 So that's the result from the Tidville in the heart of the South Wales Valleys the first yes vote of the evening, and uh, it's around about a 3,000 majority for the yes. Let's have a look at the precise figures. Peter. Well, which is typical? That's the question. Uh, here we have Merthyr Tydfil in the Welsh Valleys, and an awful lot more Welsh Valleys than there are uh, areas over here. More people living in the Welsh Valleys and more people living west. Uh, so this may be a very good sign for the yeses, but it's too early to say yet. 12,707, 9,121. No, down here in Merthyr Tidville, there it is, the, one of the westernmost of the Welsh valleys. And here we have the, share, the shares, 58.2 to 41.8%. Uh, the yes majority then 16.4 in Merthyr Tidville. Uh, and we can now add it all together and see how Wales looks after five results. Something like a, a quarter of the results, although the massive population areas like Swansea and Cardiff still very much to come. Uh, here we have the yes vote, then we have a 550,000 winning post that they have to get to. We reckon the turnout, by the way, looks more like 49.5% now, edging down from 50, 79,470 for yes. No, still ahead, of course, with only one uh, yes majority in Merthyr Tidville, 108,026, 
The shares 42.4 to 57.6, still a huge lead for the nose. Um, but early days yet, 15.2% then the majority due for the nose. Peter, thanks very much indeed. Just one little note for you. The BBC computer is working overtime. Uh, and the BBC computer is telling us that on the basis of that and the other results and projecting, of course, across the rest of Wales, this result is too close to call. It's absolutely neck and neck at this stage. We're expecting, of course, the bulk of the results in within the next hour. It is genuinely going to be a nail-biting finish. It's a very exciting story as it unfolds. I'm going straight to our Millbank studio in Westminster, just a stone's throw from the Houses of Parliament, where the former Conservative chairman, uh, Sir Norman Fowler, is waiting for us. Sir Norman, good evening to you. Good evening. So it is. It's good morning. I'm sorry about that, but still. Um, encouraged or not so far? Yes, uh, encouraged. It's obviously too early to uh, tell, but I think that uh, what has happened is that there's a low turnout. Uh, the no vote um, at the moment is uh, high. It's obviously too early to tell. But if I was the government, I would be extremely nervous about what is happening. I don't think that anyone can claim that uh, on the votes, that, on the, what we've seen so far, that this is remotely uh, an endorsement of Labour Party, Labour government policy. One interesting point, Sir Norman, which I wanted to put you was this. Um, if, as many expect, Londoners vote for a London government, assembly of some kind, and if, as many expect, that kind of assembly would also go to an area like the North East, I was there reporting last year that seems to be evidence that people there want that, um, well then, where would that leave Wales without one? Where, where does that argument lead? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I, I think that's really very much a, a, an issue to put to the government, but I think you put your finger upon one of the very interesting uh, points about tonight. I think the implications on the English uh, debate, I think is very profound, because I think there has been um, an assumption up to now that automatically we're going to go to regional assemblies throughout England. I've always taken the view that there wasn't this groundswell of public support uh, for English assemblies, separate regional assemblies. And I think that you, you will find that whatever happens tonight, that that bandwagon has been stopped. And I think that's very significant. You think that that bandwagon would be stopped even I, if it were a yes vote, a narrow yes vote? Well, I think, yes, even if it was a, a net, because as your computer is indicating, and I don't always agree with BBC computers. No, I know. <laughs> um, uh, but your computer is indicating, and, and, and common sense would seem to indicate, that it is going to be a, uh, a close uh, vote. But I think that the assumption that there was a real groundswell, which is, was going to, I'll leave London out of this argument, because London is separate and we want a London uh, mayor. But in the regions outside London, if take somewhere like the West Midlands, which is my own area, I don't find there that there's an enormous groundswell of public demand for a regional assembly. What they and what we relate to are cities like Birmingham, and Coventry and Wolverhampton. We don't uh, relate to some uh, regional assembly which is away from the people and away from the electorate. Why is uh, uh, an expression of identity like a, law, uh, like a mayor, an elected mayor for London, appropriate in London, but an expression of identity like a Welsh assembly not appropriate for Wales? Well, I think the, appro the appropriateness of a mayor for London um, is, is basically this, that you have got in London a whole range of borough councils, but you haven't got a voice for London, a central voice for London, uh, someone speaking for London itself. You can't make that case as, as far as Wales is concerned, and actually you can't make that case uh, virtually as far as any other part of the country is concerned. Uh, Sir Norman, how do you respond to the accusations made against you that you've done nothing but uh, a bout of scaremongering during this campaign? No, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's remotely the case. I think that, uh, for example, Michael Ancrum has uh, appeared uh, on debate after debate putting uh, the case. I don't think that we have done that, and I think that that rather devalues and uh, uh, rather uh, undervalues what uh, the, the intelligence and the sense of, the, sense of uh, the, the Welsh people. They know perfectly uh, well Norman, what the issues are. Sir Norman, thank you very much indeed. Thank the result coming. Thanks a lot. Over to the result. Anglesey. Here are the results for the Isle of Anglesey. Never applied lace head delis a burrue dross a ruiven catino, a dalit kail canicia di gumri, oil. The number of valid votes cast for I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Hamseg Meal, Huef Cant, Pedwar Deg Now, 15,649. Never applied lace head delis a burrue dross 
nid oedd yn cytuno y delid cael cynulliad i Gymru oedd The number of valid votes cast for I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Pymseg Mil and now De Pimp, 15,095. Nifer y papirau pleidleisio a wrthodwyd oedd The number of rejected ballot papers was 86. Well, I told you it would be nail-biting. I told you it would be exciting. It's certainly developing that way. Look at that vote in Anglesey. We will shortly have a look at the precise figures, but, well, a majority of under 104. But at least it is a second vote in favour, which will, of course, be of great relief to the Welsh Secretary and his team who are following results down in the national count. Let's have a look at that precise small majority. Peter. Right, Hugh. Well, here is the result then in Anglesey. The Plaid Cymru Westminster seat of Alice Moore. Uh, a solid Welsh nationalist seat in Westminster. Uh, only marginally yes, though, to a Welsh Assembly. 15,649. 15,095 against. The closest we've had yet. Uh, the shares then, 50.9, 49.1. Higher turnout in Anglesey, 57%, well above the halfway. Uh, and the majority then for the yes, just 1.8% in this very, very Welsh part of Wales, or of Welsh speakers at Anglesey, and so on. Now let's just add them all together and see how we're doing. Uh, so far with six results then, a couple of green ones for yes here, the Central Valley of Merthyr uh, and Newport, uh, Denbyshire, Flintshire and Wrexham up here. 95,119 then for yes, 123,121 no's, the shares 43.6, 56.4, and we reckon it's going to be too close to call. Sorry, can't tell you where those blocks are going to stop. It's just <laughs> simply too close to call at the moment, but it could go either way. Hugh? That's worth staying with us, absolutely. Too close to call, absolutely. Now, um, with those results in, we've got, uh, we've got 16 to come, and they'll all come um, like uh, a big waterfall, I suggest, in the next hour, hour and a half. Let's go down to the National Counting Centre in Cardiff, uh, my colleague, our political correspondent, John Pina, is there. Uh, John, what's the mood now? Well, Hugh, there were gasps of relief in the, the gallery over there, just as that result came in. The Yes campaign clearly massively relieved to have scraped home in the way that they did. Watching as the evening's gone on, broad smiles on the Yes campaign faces turning into furrowed brows. This is certainly going to be a cliffhanger. The mood here is rather tense. I'm joined now by Kevin Morgan of the Yes campaign and Stuart Andrew from the No campaign. Let me just put it to you, Kevin. Obviously not the kind of results you might have hoped for. Well, this is a numbers game, John, and uh, some of the big numbers have not come in yet. We had hoped, obviously, to be uh, uh, winning more of these than we have done today. But it's obviously very, very close, as we always expected, and it's going to be a long night. And you, uh, you were saying this is a, a lot closer than you could have hoped. Absolutely. I mean, I'm amazed at this result tonight, especially Anglesey, when you consider it is the heartland of where the Welsh nationalists hold power. If they have only just scraped in by saying yes, this is voting rather well and rather best than we thought for the no campaign. So I'm very optimistic with tonight. And the word from the Cardiff count, the whisper there, is that that could well go against you. That's the, the rumour at the moment. It's something oh, to worry about. If Cardiff went against us, that would be truly disappointing. We await uh, with bated breath, as it were, to see how the big valley seats score. And some of our early indications from the valleys are actually quite encouraging. What about those valley seats? Are they going to come riding to the rescue of the yes campaign? Well, I mean, it's a very long night ahead of us and we're still waiting to see. But, you know, when you consider all the aspects of the safe Labour seats in the northeast of Wales, where Tony Blair has visited with thousands of people, they've lost those seats. We have won them and I think, you know, we're heading for victory tonight and I'm, I'm very optimistic. Well, there's a bold prediction, if you like. Kevin Morgan, are clearly the, the no campaign at the moment, seem to have their tails up. You aren't going to get, if you win this referendum, the kind of endorsement, the kind of authority for a, a parliament that you would have hoped for. If we do indeed win it, it's going to be very close. And obviously, uh, turnout has been low and the result has been closer. And obviously, that uh, wouldn't all go well for a, a moral mandate, as it were. But as I said earlier, it's going to be a long night and it's going to be very close. Well, you've been out and about, obviously, during the campaign. What is it that's uh, stacked things in the way that, that it hasn't seen? Uh, this campaign has been about one issue self-confidence. Have the Welsh people got self-confidence to manage their own affairs? If it goes against us, then clearly the answer is they don't have the self-confidence. Stop you there. Kevin Morgan, thank you very much. Back to you here. John, thanks very much indeed. Still neck and neck, no doubt about that at all. We're waiting for Blaine Gwent, Ebu Vale, as otherwise known. Um, it should be coming up quite soon. I can see um, there on the 
feed of pictures from Blaenau Gwent that uh, the returning officer is just about ready to start. Um, while he just waits for a few seconds there, let's just have a quick word with Barry about that result, um, uh, the result we've just had there from uh, Anglesey. What do you make of it, Barry? I think it's the most significant result so far because it, uh, it indicates that uh, the pattern which was revealed in Clwyd might, might extend into the west and northwest of Wales. And this has severe implications for the Yes campaign because I know in, in Gwynedd they expect it to win two to one. I think we can just stop there, um, now Barry, and go to the, the, of the referendum to the county borough of Blaine Gwent. I, David Keith Jones, being the counting officer for the county borough of Blaine Gwent, hereby give notice that I certified the following results. In the said county borough, the number of valid votes cast for the proposition, I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was 15,237. The number of valid votes cast for the proposition, I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly, was 11,928. The number of rejected ballot papers was 147. It's signed D.K. Jones, Counting Officer. Yes. Uh, look, look at those pictures there. Look at the jubilation in Blaen I Gwent. I think some of those people can't quite believe the vote there. This, of course, is the Yes Party at the, um, at, uh, at the Park Hotel in Cardiff, looking at that there, who can't quite believe the result. Blaenau Gwent, I should remind you, is the um, seat of Llaw Smith, one of the leading lights in the No campaign. Um, he did sound rather cautious when we spoke to him earlier on. We now understand why, because he probably did have a hunch that things weren't quite going his way uh, in Blaenau Gwent. Um, some 4,000 there of a majority for the Yes campaign. Mm. Definitely the best result for them so far. A long way to go. Peter, let's have a look at those figures. What a fascinating patchwork uh, this is. Here we have Dina Grant then, uh, the easternmost of the Welsh valleys over here. Uh, 15,237 yes, 11,928 no. The shares then, 56.1, 43.9. There's the turnout, by the way, again, just below 50% over here. The majority for the yes in Blainer Gwent, 12.2% over here in Blainer Gwent. As uh, Hugh said, Klaus Smith clearly failed then to persuade his, uh, his uh, supporters there to go along with him and say no to it. Uh, after seven results, the whole of Wales aggregating it all together then. Just look at this mixture of yeses and noes. Anglesey, one of the most Welsh parts of Wales, uh, going green for yes, but only just. Uh, and Blainer Gwent and Merthyr going yes as well. 110,356 uh, votes for yes, no, here's the winning post, 550,000, can the nose get anywhere near it, it's still a long way away, but moving up there rather faster than the yeses, 135,049 uh, so far, and the shares then 45 to 55, a majority for the nose so far of just 10%, Hugh. Well, Peter, I don't think we're going to know what's going to happen here for a few hours yet. Uh, certainly not until after we get Cardiff and some of the other big uh, areas of concentrated areas of, uh, of voters. Um, that was a fascinating result from Blaine Gwent. So let's give uh, Glyn's panel a chance to react to that first. Glyn. Well, thank you, Hugh. Two results to talk about there, beginning with uh, Blaine Gwent. Nigel Evans, uh, a bit of a blow there for Klaus Smith, because it was his patch, wasn't it? And he was a leading anti-devolutionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, well, the night will, uh, will, will tell whether Clue was right as far as the country is concerned. But I suspect the Labour Party pushed a lot of effort into Clue's uh, seat just to ensure that oh, he got a bloody new nose. Unduly cynical there. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 guilty. But uh, uh, as far as, so th that's Blaine I Gwent. As far as uh, Anis Mon, which is the other result as well, that one, although um, it voted yes by only 600, and it is, uh, I went up into that, in, into that part of Wales during the campaign, quite a number of yes supporters there, of course, Plaid Land as well. And I think that is a surprise, and I'm going to even count that as a victory for us, really, because we did get a very, very good result there. Helen Mary Jones, it is a, a parliamentary seat held by your party, Plaid Cymru, uh, and yet only a very, very narrow victory. I'm surprised it's as narrow as it is. I'm not surprised that it's not a thumping majority. I mean, we've been asking our supporters to go out and vote for proposals that, that are far, far short of what they actually support. And I think that, I mean, I've been involved in the phone canvassing that's been going on in that part, of, in, in our own, the seats that we hold, parliamentary seats that we hold. And there has been, I mean, a lack of enthusiasm. That said, you know, it's a concerning result, and it's very pleasing to have the results from Merthyr from and from Lina Gwent that, that are showing us that the valleys may be going in, in another direction. 
it's still very, very much too close to call. And Chloe, perhaps the Valleys are going to be the, 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 the saviour of the Yes campaign if that's how it turns out. Well, it looks as though it's a possibility at the moment. Uh, it's a very surprising result, I think, um, from Anglesey. It's a yes vote, but by a small majority. And I could be unchargeable and say, why didn't Pride get its vote? Because they weren't our proposals, well, and our supporters don't like them. I'm afraid, That's why. I'm afraid it's a bit late to start saying they weren't our proposals. I mean, you dithered at the beginning uh, over these proposals. We weren't sure whether you were going to vote yes or no to them. And it wasn't until, you know, the last few months that we knew actually Pride were going to support them. Well, so maybe it was because you dithered. Were. You dithered and weren't uh, firm enough on supporting uh, these particular proposals. That was all that was on offer. It would have been a step, and I still believe it will be a step in the right direction. Brief word, Lambert Well, uh, I'm not going to throw mud at the other parties until I know what happens in my own area. <laughs> but uh, this is certainly very, very interesting. And I think we'll spend some time analysing why each party's voters did what they did. All right, thank you very much. Hugh. Glyn, thanks very much indeed. Robin, that uh, result from Blaine Gwent, knowing what Clow Smith's done, um, was it that surprising then? Well, uh, what is interesting, I think, about the result from Blaine Gwent and from Merthyr is that it's, uh, to some extent, old labour to the rescue. The Yes campaign, first decent results they've had of the night, old labour territory, Ironically, of course, Merthyr as well, uh, Ted Rowlands uh, as local MP, another of those who's been critical, wasn't actually going to vote against, but he was one of those saying that uh, with having a Welsh Assembly and MPs at Westminster, there wasn't enough for a hundred politicians to do in Wales. So uh, two of the uh, Welsh opponents of devolution, in a sense, their, you know, their constituency areas going against them, but significant that Labour has had to depend on that old Labour vote. And that, of course, is going to bring long-term problems because Labour has been putting an enormous amount into this campaign trying to reassure uh, people from other parts of Wales that uh, an assembly wouldn't be swamped by old-style Labour councillors from traditional Labour areas. Um, Barry, on the Blaine Gwent uh, result specifically, um, would the Yes campaign be ill-advised at this stage to be taking too much heart after saying that? Well, I think we need to take heart almost out of anything, because so far the, the, the evening hasn't been so good. As I say, I think the real problem is that it may be that uh, the, all the campaign have got going for them, uh, the Yes campaign have got going for them, is the, is the, is the traditional Labour vote. Um, I think the expectation was that North West Wales, that Plaid would deliver North West Wales, and on the basis of Anglesey, one has to say, well, they're not delivering it as, as, as extensively and completely as we expected. So I think, you know, the, the strategy was a two-track two track strategy, that the, the west of Wales would be delivered by Clyde and, and Labour would mop up industrial Wales. Now, Labour's starting to mop up industrial Wales, but the question is, is Clyde going to recover from the, the slight stumble that it had in well, this morning? OK, well, on that issue of delivering, delivering votes, um, let's pick up on the Liberal Democrats. Uh, simply because they, of course, uh, according to our survey earlier on, um, were failing to deliver half of the people, uh, half of their people, in terms of the yes vote. Let's go to Westminster and join uh, the Liberal Democrat MP Simon Hughes. Good morning, Mr. Hughes. Hello, Hugh. Uh, were you surprised by that figure we had from the survey earlier on, suggesting that half of your party uh, supporters did not support this measure? I'm disappointed by it. I'm not surprised because there have been another poll some weeks ago which showed similarly, in fact, it showed slightly worse. I think the reality is that we are a party, you rightfully said earlier in your programme, which has for a hundred years championed devolution, been a party supporting federalism. Um, but that's a party where the views are obviously formed by the activists, the councillors, the members of parliament, the officers and so on, and, and some of the membership is more reluctant and the reality is in Wales the proposal on the table was never the sort of proposal we ideally wanted. It was for us a compromise. And in the parts of Wales where we get a lot of our votes, Mid Wales, parts of North Wales, parts of West Wales, there was a great suspicion of a body that was appearing to be rooted entirely in Cardiff. And I have to say that as much as anything else is one of the reasons why for people in North East Wales who've seen the results, people in Unnesmorn, for example, there may well have been a feeling, hang on a minute, this isn't really going to give us a say, it's going to be down there in Cardiff, not speaking for us. Well, on the issue of principle, um, I'm not dismissing that argument about Cardiff and North and South because obviously that is a real issue for some people, but really you'd expect people ha perhaps to pay greater attention to the principle involved. And given Mr Ashton's lead, the lead people like you have given consistently over the years, it is still a little surprising that committed Liberal Democrats can turn out and, not just abstain, but turn out and vote against this. 
Well, we don't know that, Hugh. What we know, and Lembit made a perfectly valid point, we're going to have to look later at who voted what way. It may be that a lot of our people who were not persuaded didn't vote. I was in Lembit's constituency in Montgomery earlier this week, and there were a lot of people who looked as if, sounded as if, spoke as if they weren't going to vote. They hadn't heard enough of the argument. I think the trouble was we had a campaign uh, shortly after the summer holidays, interrupted by the funeral of Princess Diana, and the reality is that it wasn't a campaign in which enough information was given to enough people. So I don't think we will have had many Liberal Democrats voting against. I think we'll, we, will major, we will predominantly have had Liberal Democrats either voting in favour or the, the unpersuaded, like many of other parties, I'm afraid staying at home, which explains some of the low turnout. Uh, a very quick final point to you, Mr Hughes, if I may. Um, uh, the debate, as such, has been going on for decades. So, really, the argument that people haven't had enough time to digest this debate perhaps doesn't quite wash, does it? Well, I'll tell you why, in a very simple point. At the end of the day, all the people who are not clearly of one or other view may be influenced, often are influenced, by what it's going to cost them. And the thought of paying for more politicians, unless you think you're getting good value for money, is something that is not, to most people out there, other than us, very appealing. That's the argument that I don't think was convincingly won, that okay. it would cost barely any more, and that it would bring much more democracy. We've got to prove that, I hope, at the end of tonight, when the yes votes win the day, even if only by a small margin. Mr Hughes, thank you very much for talking to us. Pleasure. Now, we are expecting the best part of uh, 20 results still, I think. Um, 7 out of 22 goes uh, uh, 15, anyway. My, fig my thumbs aren't quite good at this time of the morning. Uh, now, Blaine Gwent, um, a 12%, surprise 12% majority in favour. And that is, of course, the seat of the Labour MP, Claire Smith. We spoke to Mr Smith earlier on. Mr Smith, um, good morning again. Good morning. Now then, um, you were fairly cautious earlier on, rightly so, as it turned out. Um, I take it that you're disappointed, but how surprised were you? Um, I'm obviously disappointed, but I'm not too surprised because I suspect as the night goes on, you may find the big yes are in those areas where there's a big Labour majority and people are not necessarily voting for a Welsh Assembly, they vote him for a Labour government, as we know throughout this campaign, uh, that certainly people in the yes camp was trying to project uh, the impression that it was uh, Labour against Tories. Some of us argue that that uh, certainly wouldn't stand up to serious analysis, so I'm not surprised. Although I'm obviously disappointed uh, of the result in uh, Blind and Grand. It wasn't a massive uh, uh, victory. It was a victory of approximately 3,000 votes. Um, it's surprising, though, Mr Smith, in a way, isn't it, simply because in your strongholds in the North East, um, the pattern was totally different. Obviously, some of the arguments against were much, much more effective there. Hmm. What is the difference then between there and this Labour stronghold of yours, where you've given such a lead, you're a very, very well-known, prominent local man, hmm. that hasn't worked. And what, what is the difference between Blaenau Gwent and areas up in the north? Well, I think uh, around here, what we mustn't forget is, in Blaenau Gwent, for example, we're one of the poorest communities in Wales. We've got some of the worst health problems in the United Kingdom. We've got some of the lowest wages and people were desperate to rid ourselves of that Tory government and indeed I was part of that and I think now there was a feeling amongst a considerable number that after just a few months no matter what they felt about a Welsh Assembly they couldn't vote a Labour, against the Labour government and I appreciate that, I understand that, there's no problem to that. Um, what's the feedback for you personally Mr Smith? Are people, um, are people rather unhappy with the way you've conducted yourself locally? I don't think so, I haven't had any uh, criticism. My constituency party put out a statement a while back saying that both sides of the argument should be put. That statement was almost identical uh, to Mr Blair. Indeed, we were inundated with phone calls and such like uh, when we were campaigning that a debate should take place. And it has taken place and that's much to the credit of the Prime Minister who called a referendum and whence the referendum was called said both sides of the argument should be put. Mr Smith, very kind of you to join us again. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Now, let's keep that uh, blind I went link. Let's go down to the Yes Party. Michael Crick is there with someone not a million miles from blind I went. Michael. Yes, Hugh. I'm uh, joined here by Bernard Assender, who's the, uh, the Labour leader of uh, blind I went Council, who was uh, campaigning against Mr Smith and campaigning for uh, a Yes vote. Mr Assender, um, what do you make of this result uh, in blind I went? I am delighted by the end result. I have no doubt that the people in Blaine and Gwent 
have enough faith in themselves to, uh, to vote yes. Um, Do you think Mr. Smith made a difference? I think it was marginal, perhaps if he hadn't been, hadn't been involved, if he'd have supported the party policy, it would have been a bigger yes vote. But I never had any doubt whatsoever that the people of Brenner Gwent had enough courage to vote the way they did. People here have been chanting, uh, Clue Smith out, deselect him. And it was the biggest... You could, you could tell from that that the strength of feeling here. Are there going to be moves in the, in the local party to deselect him, to get rid of him? I wouldn't have thought... I have no idea. I mean, Lowe's got a great deal of respect in the party. Um, his, his principles are very sound. I mean, he has uh, sound sorts of principles. He has a great deal of respect and admiration. Um, he fights on issues that are important to people uh, in Blaine Gwent. I have no idea. I mean, that is a matter for the future. But, but I mean, if he felt that way, wasn't he right to tell people what he thought? Everyone has a right to a wrong opinion. Um, right, well, we're going to the National Count Centre, I think, for the Torvine. Uh, that's Pontypool. If we can hear it. This is the yes vote. The number of valid votes cast for, I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly, was 15,756. Never applied later to this period, Dros Nidwyven Catino, a valid Cael Cynisia de Gymru, oedd. The number of valid votes cast for, I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly, was 15,000. Pimp Dick of Hedward, 15,854. 15, Nivera Papira Pedletia Aur Thodoidois, the number of rejected ballot papers was now Dick, 90. Dana Viewer Cahoyviad Torvine, that completes the declaration for Torvine. Now, that is the Yes Party, and one can understand why they're like that. It's a very, very narrow victory for the Noes. They've just lost Torvine. Torvine, to remind you, is the area which includes Cumbran and Pontypool. And it is also the area represented by the Northern Ireland Minister, the Labour MP, Paul Murphy. And he, back in 1979, by the way, was the treasurer of the No campaign in Wales. He's not taken a prominent role this time, clearly, because he is a minister. But those figures are very, very interesting. A few hundred, well, a hundred, I think, of a majority for the nose there. And Peter can take us through some of those figures again. Peter. Right, Hugh, let's look at Torvine then, as you say, uh, over in the old county of Gwent, which uh, back in the 79 referendum voted, uh, it's eight to one, eight or nine to one, against uh, a Welsh Assembly. And there is uh, Torvine now saying no to a Welsh Assembly, 45% the turnout. 15,756 to 15,854, as you said, uh, 98 votes in it, uh, and it's a share then of 49.8 to 50.2 percent, just a tiny majority for the nose uh, in Torvine. Now let's just uh, bang it all together, uh, rattle it up and see what Wales after eight results totals, because it's the total that matters. It doesn't matter what colour these all go, it's what colour the whole of Wales goes when you aggregate it all up. 126,112 for yes. The nose way ahead of that, 150,903. There's the scatter of colour over the map now. Two hopeful signs for the yes there uh, in the valleys. And Torvine only marginally uh, no in an area that is very strongly, uh, in the past anyway, very strongly for no to a Welsh Assembly. Now let's have a look then at the shares, 45.5 to 54.5, a 10% lead for the nose. And our forecast, still too close to call, still can't say for certain which way it's going to go. I need a lot more results in yet. It's very, very close indeed. Here are the yes majorities. Merthyr, the biggest, 16% yes. Blainer went 12. Anglesey, 2% only. Very tight in Anglesey indeed. Torvine, Wrexham, Denbyshire, Flintshire, and the biggest no in Newport. These are majorities for the no. 25%, the biggest majority for no there in Newport, Hugh. Peter, fascinating result there in Torvine. Um, Barry Jones, what did you make of that? Well, again, uh, it's beginning to look as though... Uh, the, the strongholds that Labour have in the valleys are, are not going to hold, or if they are holding, they aren't holding with sufficient votes to overcome the majority that's been built up for the no campaign in Fluid. Still very, very close, isn't it? Well, yes. It, uh, again, we're looking to the, the votes in the West, if the votes in the West can come through and, and rectify the, uh, the campaign uh, stuttering that the, the Yes campaign has gone through now. 
it comes to the issue, I think, that Cardiff is crucial to all this, because Cardiff got so many votes. The way that Cardiff goes, I suspect the way Wales will go. Tony Blair, if he's watching. Tony Blair will be exceedingly nervous, I think, at this point, and Ron Davis doesn't exactly carry a lot of hair, but what he does, I think, will probably be standing up on end at the moment, Hugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we may see later on, Robin, what the nature of uh, Ron Davis's coiffure is. Now, um, I think we're in a position now to go to, um, to the National Town Centre, I think. No, to Alex Salmond, I beg your pardon, Alex Salmond of the SNP. Um, this is, no, Mr. Salmond, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm sorry, I was a little slow uh, realising where you were. Could be a long were, morning. But, I, but I, I know where you are now. Um, I'm in what, Edinburgh. What do you make of it? You're, oh, you're in Edinburgh? Yes. Well, thanks for telling me. That's, it's good to know. Now, what do you make of it so far? Well, quite a contrast with uh, last week. It was a, a thumping yes last week. It looks like it's on a knife edge in Wales. Believe me, a thumping yes is better. Now, um, what are the factors, do you think, that are at play here? Well, I think there's two main factors. I mean, we know that the national debate in Scotland is further advanced. I mean, that's been clear over many years. It was clear in the last referendum where, of course, there was a narrow yes in Scotland and a, a huge no in Wales. So I don't think we should be surprised about the difference between the two countries. But I think there is another factor. I mean, it looks to me like the Welsh uh, situation this time is rather like the Scottish debate in 1979, uh, where there was a, a rather weak devolution package was offered to the Scottish people, and it was only very, very narrowly uh, given a, a yes vote. Now, the Welsh uh, package offered this time obviously is less powerful than the one uh, offered to Scotland. And I've got a feeling that you'd have had a bit more enthusiasm in Wales if the package offered to Wales had been comparable to what was offered to Scotland. But you can't complain about the enthusiasm with which the government's been selling the package, can you? Uh, well, I'm not making that comment. I'm just saying that the, uh, the uh, package offered to Wales was much more vulnerable to attack as a, a mere talking shot. Now, you couldn't make a serious argument in Scotland that the Scottish Parliament and offer was a talking shot because clearly it had a range of legislative powers. It also had a tax varying power, so that wasn't a talking shot, whatever else people thought Mr. about Salmon, it. So it was a much easier I'm, package to sell. There may uh, be a lesson there. I'm the sorry to cut across you, Mr. Salmon. Right. We have the result from Bridge End. Thank you. Here are the results for Bridge End. Neither applied Lysai Dilis, Avurio Dros, or even Katino, Adelis Kai Kanishadi Gamri, Oiz. The number of valid votes cast for I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Dyvek Saif Neil Quech Kant. 27,632. The number of valid votes cast for I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Dyveg Tree Meal Kant Saifdeg Dai. 23,172. That is the Yes Party celebrating a victory, not a huge victory, but uh, a victory certainly of a few thousand uh, in Bridge End, which is uh, between uh, Cardiff and Swansea, for those who are unfamiliar with the geography of South Wales. Um, so that is yet another victory for the Yeses, but it's all very uncertain. The picture is by no means complete at this stage. It still looks very, very closely fought. Let's have a look at those uh, figures from Bridgend, which, by the way, is represented by a Welsh office minister, Wynne Griffiths. Let's go over to Peter. And indeed, but of course, uh, uh, split the Labour Party there. Sir Ray Powell, the member for Ogmore, just next door to Bridgend, uh, against a Welsh Assembly, and perhaps not helping it too much, but nevertheless, uh, a yes vote in Bridgend, but a very narrow one. 27,632, 23,172. The turnout there just above the 50%. There's Bridgend, about 20 miles west of Cardiff there. Uh, and the shares, 54.4 yes, 45.6 in Bridgend saying no, the majority then for yes, 8.8%. Now, Wales as a whole so far after nine results. There's the patchwork building up now. Indeed notice as we move west how it's going greener, but still much too early to say which way it's going to go. Here is our winning post now at 551,000. We're getting closer now to being sure about the winning post as more uh, turnouts and more votes come in. How are we getting on? The yes vote there at 153,744, not halfway there yet. The no at 174,075. The gap is closing uh, and the shares 46.9, 53.1%.
the majority for the noes, so far 6.2%. Hugh. Peter, thanks very much indeed. Bridgend, solid Labour territory. Once again in this case, like by Gwent, which is not too far away from Bridgend, voting uh, narrowly in favour. Uh, let's get some response then from Anne Cloyd and the, the uh, other people on uh, Glynn's panel. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, indeed, Anne Cloyd, uh, a majority <coughs> of about 4,000 in Bridgend. Not much, is it? Things are improving. Uh, <laughs> it, was a yes, it was a yes vote in Bridgend. And uh, remember, there were two MPs. Uh, one was in favour and the other was against. So uh, I think the vote reflects that somewhat. Uh, Nigel Evans? Well, Anne would say that, wouldn't she? The fact is it's not been a very good night for Anne or for the Yes campaign. I'm sure that they expected a much larger majority in Bridgend and also in Tor Torvine as well, where that actually voted no. That was a, a valley seat that really should have voted yes if they were uh, going to be assured of a victory. What it appears to me is that uh, the government was, is, was not just content on trying to break up the United Kingdom. What they've succeeded in tonight is breaking up Wales. Let me know, what are the point that Alex Salmon made, that, that the difference between Scotland and Wales, that if a, a, a package of greater powers for the Assembly had been proposed, then the, the reaction might have been different? Well, as you know, I've said that um, all along before even the official campaigning began, that my party's policy has always been tax-faring powers and law-making powers, the same as Scotland. But let's not harp on about that. Uh, I want to make one other interesting comparison with Scotland. And that is that they had a constitutional convention, an all-party convention, which very publicly debated the case for devolution. Now, I think it would have been a very good idea to have that here in Wales, because that would have opened the debate to the public long before the formal campaigning. That might have made a difference too. It does seem, Helen Mary Jones, that the self-confidence that the yes vote showed in Scotland uh, just doesn't apply here in Wales. We don't have the same degree of national self-confidence. I think that's I think that's true and I think that's unsurprising. I mean our nationality has survived years of, of being ruled by England more through its cultural expression. You have the institutions in Scotland there that have maintained a sense of, of identity as in identity as in a state that's obviously very different. I don't know that we can say that had the proposals been stronger the outcome would have been different. I do think that one of the questions that I was often asked was could this assembly have protected us against Thatcherism? I think one could have said resoundingly that, the, that the, the Scottish Parliament would. I think the, our assembly, when we get it, will be in a position more of influence rather than power. And I think it's, it, it slightly watered down the argument, but certainly can get rid of it. I mean, I mean and, and the arguments for the assembly are still very, very strong indeed. But it is that the different nature of our, culture, of our national identity. It's not that we don't feel strongly Welsh, but it's the way we express that doesn't lend itself necessarily to politics. Do you agree with that, Anne? Do you think that the proposals could have been put in a different way, which would have been more attractive? I, I think the idea of a constitutional convention would have been a good idea. Mm. I, I do agree with that. Uh, it would have prepared people, I think, a bit more uh, for these proposals. Although I have to say, these have been debated in the Labour Party since Keir Hardy in 1901. <laughs> and there have been uh, at least five attempts in the, during the century uh, of private members' bills to get a measure of self-rule for Wales. Um, but, you know, I would have liked more than, than, than was on offer. I don't think mm -hmm. it would have made a blind bit of difference to the results, quite frankly. There is no indication that the people of Wales wanted more. And uh, I say this, you know, as one who did want more myself, but there was no uh, indication amongst the people I talked to that they, they actually wanted more. And, of course, there's no indication in the vote for, for Plaid Cymru, who have uh, obviously called for more. In fact, Plaid Cymru's vote has gone down in election after election. Can I, can I say, Glenn, it's a bit rich, uh, all the others now saying that there should have been more debate within Wales, because debate was closed down wherever it was tried to take place. It was closed down in the House of Commons. The Welsh Grand Committee didn't even discuss devolution, which I find totally amazing. And these proposals have been rushed through even without a bill being discussed properly in the House of Commons. And I suspect that it might have been a little bit better for the people of Wales. The people of Wales would have been more informed had a bill gone through the House of Commons and been properly debated so they understood exactly what the real issues but, but, but were. As, but as the campaign progressed, if anything, the yes vote declined, didn't it? I mean, Lemadovic. Well, no, we don't know that at all. We didn't have the vote uh, five weeks ago. And I'd point out that we still don't know the result. It's nail-biting and it's close, <laughs> but we don't know who's won. Yes. Let me just say, though, that while I agree with Nigel that we should have had more debate, the one unhelpful thing in the entire debate is the no vote, largely the Tory campaigners' negative and misleading statements 
for example, that tax would go up by £1,200. So while the Yes campaigners from all the parties have tried to be rational and reasonable, it's been scare tactics, and that, that's you know, to be regretted. It, the No campaign have been accused of being negative. The fact is we didn't phrase the questions. We could have phrased the questions so that people who wanted uh, things that, that we didn't have a talking shop in Cardiff voted no, yes. But I'm saying you so haven't we, we could have gone down this route. I'm so, saying you so haven't even been I, honest I in what you've said to the I, public. I, I well, why did you amazing. say that there was going to be a £1,200 tax hike when you know as well as I well, do there is no tax bearing power whatsoever well, in the proposal? Well, I think what you, might find, what, what you might find, and people are, were scared and people voiced this concern, in England as well as in Wales, that there might be a change to the bar Don't formula, away from which the would question. take, which Ask, would take, which, which would Where be a tax increase. It would be. Let me if the Barnet formula. Uh, I didn't was think you'd back. answer that question. No, if the Barnet formula was cut back, <laughs> the subsidy was cut back from England to Wales, you would see taxes going up. If the Assembly then starts to spend money itself because it has no tax bearing powers, it would raise the council I've taxes and point. this would impinge on, the, on, on people in Wales. Right, we don't know yet now whether there is going to be an Assembly. Hugh? Glenn, um, just to remind viewers, just nine results in, 13 to go, so fewer than half of them in yet, and all to play for. Uh, still saying, our computer still saying it's just too close to call. It will go perhaps right up to the last few results. We're expecting the biggest, which is Cardiff itself, very shortly. Um, a quarter of a million voters in Cardiff. Um, of course, we didn't get a quarter of a million turning up to go to the polls today, but uh, that's the actual size of the electorate involved. Um, so we'll stick with Cardiff, and we'll go down to the cafe quarter where Linda Mitchell is there with some, uh, with some interesting guests, Linda. Thanks, you. We've been watching uh, the developments as they've gone on. I think it's fair to say we've agreed amongst ourselves that they do highlight the differences in Wales, don't they? Peter said, are you surprised at anything we've seen? No, I think the people of Wales are being asked to vote on an assembly in Cardiff, and what we've seen so far is the differing reactions to Cardiff from all over Wales. Newport was a big disappointment for the Yes campaign. People from Newport can't stand Cardiff, you know, they're, they're, they're great rivals. Merthyr and some of the valleys to the north of Cardiff relate very, very much to Cardiff. So I'm delighted to see that the places that understand how Wales works and how Cardiff works are voting yes. And I think this pattern will go on. Wonderful for Merthyr, pioneering Liberals in the 19th century, the first Labour MP in the whole country, the first positive result into that. I'm really proud of Merthyr tonight. Tears in my eyes when that result came in. <laughs> and you've never been proud of Merthyr before, it has to be said. <laughs> Trevor Fishlock, now you've travelled around the world. How do you think people will regard this result? I think that they'll be rather mystified at what's going on. They could understand Scotland more clearly. But here we have a much more exciting night than Scotland had. This is more confused. It's um, still neck and neck. Wales is a very subtle, complex, disputatious place. Uh, even in the valleys, each of the 22 valleys of South Wales regards itself as uh, an individual uh, Welsh Republic and thinks it's better than its neighbours. It's not just north and south. It's everything. Wales is a jigsaw, and that's why it's one of the most fascinating small countries. But it's not the irony that if we were to reinvent Welshness, we could only get it by an assembly. But because we are so divided, we may never get that chance to reinvent Welshness. Michael? What is difficult to comprehend for anybody uh, looking in from the outside is... Well, sorry to leave, Linda. It's two in the morning. This is the scene in Cardiff. We've left her because Cardiff is about to declare. Oh, yeah. Cardiff? Mm -hmm. The number of valid votes cast for I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Pedwar Deg Saif Neil Pimkant Daideg Asaif 47,527. Never applied to say Dilis Avurio Dros Nidu even Katina Adalit Kai Kanisha de Gamri Oiz. The number of valid votes cast for I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Pimdeg Nau Meal Pimdeg Nau Meal Pimkant Uisdeg Anau 59,589 Nivere Papirae played Lacia Aur Fodoidois the number of rejected ballot papers was Pedro Camp. Well, that's the look again at the no campaign and they certainly have something to celebrate there simply because in the biggest contest of all in Cardiff which Labour again had been making rather positive noises about earlier today uh, the Yes campaign has been trounced there's nothing uh, doubtful about that at all it's uh, a good 12,000 I think we'll get the precise figure from Peter now this is 10% of the Welsh electorate in Cardiff 
some 250,000 people altogether eligible to vote, uh, and look what's happened in Cardiff. Here we have the Welsh capital down here, uh, 47,527, yes, and 59,589, 12,000 more saying no in Cardiff. 44.4 to 55.6 in the most important area of all, but still on the sceptical side of Wales, it has to be said. So we must still be a little bit cautious. Uh, and I think our experts will say it's still probably too close to call, but we'll see what they make of this when they come to forecast. Let's just add it all together. A no majority of 11.3% in Cardiff then, and when you add them all together, so 10 results out of 22 altogether, still not halfway through the electorate of Wales though, uh, well below that yet. There's the winning post going in, 550,000 need to get to to win for the yes or win for the no. 201,000 yes, and the no is 233,000, a lead of some 32,000, 46.3 to 53.7. The majority so far then, uh, for the no's of 7.5%. Hugh. Peter, and we are still saying, according to projections, we are still saying that it is too close to call, even after that big vote in there from Cardiff, and even after that big majority against the Assembly in the capital of Wales, where, of course, the Assembly would be based if it were actually approved by Welsh voters, it is still too close to call. We will have to wait for several results yet, and I suspect some of those results from further west into Swansea and Carmarthenshire um, to see precisely which way we will get this decision tonight. Let me just turn to Robin Oakley, first of all, there. Um, Robin, the Cardiff vote itself, such a big Labour city by now, Cardiff. Um, they did develop, a, they did actually deliver a much, much, much bigger yes vote than they did in 79, not surprisingly. But it's still 12,000 majority to the no's is big, isn't it? In, indeed. The yes campaign would really have been looking for something very different in that result. Uh, something to start to tip the balance uh, the other way and they haven't got it and as you were saying that is the capital city where the assembly would have been held uh, or will be held if it is voted for by the rest of the Welsh electorate but that is a stunning blow for the yes campaign and one begins to wonder whether the votes are there now in West Wales to stack up and uh, to turn this round as, as we go through the night there's, there's every indication here that that cry from the Yes campaign, don't be left behind following the Scottish result, simply hasn't had any resonance with the Welsh electorate. Uh, Barry, on this precise point about delivering a Labour vote, we said some things about the Yes campaign which were encouraging for them after Blaine Gwent, for example, which is such a Labour stronghold. The capital city has bucked that trend, hasn't it? it yes, it has. Um, and it's strange in a way because uh, one of the most uh, obvious beneficiaries of devolution would have been Cardiff as the capital, with the assembly there. I think there is a difference, though, between the Labour vote in Cardiff and the Labour vote in the Valleys. The Labour vote in the Valleys is, is traditional, it's, uh, it's been there for generations almost, um, and the Labour vote in Cardiff is, is more permeable, it's, it's more variable, um, and clearly on an issue like this, again, where you have a, a significant population of, of uh, incomers, um, the whole issue, I think, has resolved itself in a way which has meant that party loyalty hasn't been strong enough to counter the scepticism of the electorate in Cardiff. Thank you very much indeed. I rather rudely broke away earlier on from Linda Mitchell. Um, I'm sure she will forgive us because we wanted the result from the capital. But uh, here's your chance again, Linda. Back to you. Thank you. I knew you'd be there. Okay. Surprise, shock, dismay at the very, Cardiff result. Very, very disappointed. Extremely disappointed. And I think the situation is, is looking serious now. I, I, I think the Yes campaign have lost actually okay, on the well, basis of we, that result. We talked about the conurbations not really following each other. I mean, here we have a conurbation divided against itself. Yes, I, I love the way actually Peter has been behaving. You know, every, every result that's come, he said, this isn't really Wales, or we're still on these coasts. We're deep into Wales now, and I begin to wonder where the real Wales is. Perhaps there's some little place in West Wales that's going to be absolutely 90%... Well, Peter did say that we're on the sceptical side of Wales. The, 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 there, are, there are two Wales, right? There, there are those people who understand how Wales works politically, feel they belong politically and culturally to Wales, the glitterati, the chattering classes, and there are the rest of the population in Wales, I think, on the whole, have shown that they're not convinced that a real Wales I exists. Uh, Wales exists for a minority in, in South Wales. I think the majority of people do not accept this kind of Wales, which has been defined by elites in Wales. The, the, those elites have failed to relate themselves, in their case, to the electorate. That's, that's my but interpretation. That's an interesting point. Now, Michael Bogdanov, you've actually been 
taking Shakespeare to the people of Tiger Bay, Cardiff Darkman. Do you think that they would have been amongst those people who would have rejected the assembly? I, I think that they have yet to find an identity within Wales that they can call truly Welsh. And I think the problem that faces the communities of Wales is it, it is so divided into so many different component parts that it is having trouble in, in struggling to find a way of defining itself and collectively like... We're Scott. leaving again yeah, another result. Nivera played Lacey Dillis, a Vorgood Dross, a Ruben Catino, a Dalit Cal Kanishka de Gumri, Oiv. The number of valid votes cast for I agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Deg Meal, Pimp Cunt, now Deg a Dai, ten thousand five hundred and ninety two. Nivera played Lacey Dillis, a Vorgood Dross, Nidruven Catino, a Dalit Cal Kanishka de Gumri, Oiv. The number of valid votes cast for I do not agree that there should be a Welsh Assembly was Dai Veg Dai Meal Pedwar Kant a three twenty two thousand twenty two thousand four hundred and three. Nivera Papira Pedlacia Aur Thodridoi. The number of rejected ballot papers was Kant Inde Quer one hundred and sixteen. Another no vote. Um, that's again on the border with England in Monmouthshire. Uh, I think it's fair to say that no one expected a yes vote there. However, the scale of the victory for the no's is pretty significant. Uh, over 12,000. Peter? It is huge indeed. Uh, huge. Let's just have a look at the detail of the Monmouthshire result. There's Monmouthshire right over here in the southeast corner of Wales. Turn out just over the 50%, 51%. 10,592 green for yes, 22,403 more than twice that, red for no in Monmouthshire, 32.1 to 67.9, more than 2 to 1 against it in Monmouthshire then, majority of 35.8% for the no's. Let's just add them all together now and see where we are. First of all, the, uh, the winning post. <clears throat> Now we're up at the winning post, and we'll just have a look at the actual scores. 211,000, the winning post, about twice that number now. 256,067, they're about halfway through the Welsh electorate now. 11 results out of 22. The shares, 45.3 to 54.7. Uh, and our forecast, can we do it? No, we can't. We're still saying it's too close to call. Even after we're halfway through, it's still too close to call. Let's just have a look at the local results very quickly. Uh, before we move on, local results now, uh, a great mixture of yeses and noes. There we have the yes majorities, the biggest in Merthyr Tidville, Lynagwent, Bridgend, 2%, very close at Anglesey, in spite of that uh, Clyde Cymru uh, island up there in the top left-hand corner. 0.3% in Torvine was the narrowest no, but they mount up now to that huge 36% majority for those in Bumbershire. You. Peter, as you say, we're still saying it's too close to call, even after that huge majority for the no's in Monmouth, simply because we are not quite sure which way the votes will translate in the remaining parts of Wales, and there are quite a few results to come in, a lot of results to come in. So stay with us. The story is by no means over, and we're not quite sure which way the wind is blowing yet. Robin, if, 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 if it goes against, even narrowly, but it's against, what will that mean for the whole raft of regional policies and devolution to the English regions that Mr Blair has in mind for next year and the year after? If it goes against, the, there are a whole lot of political consequences follow, partly of a psychological nature. The government's whole raft of constitutional legislation has been a centrepiece of the programme and is going to be upset by this, is going to look lopsided uh, if Wales does not get its assembly. The whole notion, the modernization of Britain required decentralization, taking power out from the center and so on. That has become such a, a center point of Labour's creed, uh, that would be a big blow. And the whole idea that an assembly in Wales could help to act as a midwife for English regionalism and s help to stimulate the demand for English regional assemblies, that goes by the board too. Robin, thanks very much indeed. Let's go and talk to one of the leading lights in the uh, no campaign, that is Professor Nick Bourne. Um, Mr Bourne, uh, good, good morning to you. Uh, hello, Hugh. Um, what do you make of it so far then? Well, obviously I'm mightily encouraged. All the people here have worked incredibly hard on this campaign. It's a tribute to what they've done. We've been outgunned in terms of resources, but the results so far are going our way, and we're cautiously optimistic. But we're not claiming victory until we've actually got victory. 
Uh, I wouldn't expect you to claim victory. What's your hunch? It's going our way, certainly. The Cardiff result's very encouraging. If they can't win in Cardiff, the seat of the Assembly, they, they really have got no mandate for this Assembly. If you look at what they've actually done is they've split Wales. They've, the government has succeeded in dividing Wales, and that's very sad. But I hope that the result will be good for Wales, and that will, of course, be a no vote. Uh, if it's a narrow no vote or a narrow yes vote, that is by definition divisive anyway, isn't it? It is divisive, it's clear that it's divisive, but there's certainly no mandate for an assembly, but the turnout indicates that, the vote so far indicates there is certainly no mandate for an assembly. Um, it, it is disappointing that the, go the government has pushed this referendum in the way that they have. It's disappointing they tried to bounce this result the way that Scotland went. There's no mandate. This is actually a victory for the, for the no campaign, whatever happens. We were outgunned in terms of resources. The government had propaganda on its side. We ha it's been a David and Goliath battle. The way it looks at the moment, it looks as if David is going to win it. Well, let's just get one thing absolutely clear. If at the end of the morning um, it is, let's say, uh, a narrow yes, a narrow yes, will you then be campaigning forcefully for the whole thing to be dropped nonetheless? Well... It's very clear on what's happened so far that there are substantial parts of Wales that have voted against this assembly. I can't see how the government, you should throw that question at the government, I can't see how the government can claim that this is a mandate for an assembly on the votes we've got here. Um, just a final thought from you, um, uh, Professor Bourne. Uh, what is the main argument that you've deployed, do you think, that has worked best for you? Well, I think the enormous cost of this assembly that would mean the cost of two hospitals or 15 schools and the constitutional implications for the whole of the United Kingdom. There have been those two arguments that we've deployed, and we've deployed them very successfully, I think. Professor Nick Bourne of the No Campaign, thanks very much for talking to us.